Hi everybody, I'm Michelle Fitzgerald with the Senzar Learning Center and today I want to share with you a lesson that I've learned over the years of, uh, from doing client clearing work of emotional energies, belief codes, um, things of that nature, even space clearing work in some cases in relationship to recording that process in any way. Uh, so the lesson has to do with recording the clearing process, whether it's writing out what's going on in the process, you know, taking notes, myself taking notes or the client taking notes or audio recording the process or video recording the process. Um, big trouble can come out of you doing that, of recording the information in the first place uh, is not so problematic, but keeping that information and not destroying it later can lead to problems. And I'm going to big problems. And I'm going to share with you uh, a couple of stories that, that will exemplify what kind of problems can develop. Uh, my encouragement is it for you uh, it will be that you, you don't keep records of these clearing situations. Uh, whenever you do clearing sessions on yourself, or if you're a professional and you're working and you're doing client clearing work, that you, I mean, you might say, save a title or something like that just to remind you what the session was about, but you don't want to save the content of the session in a recorded form. So here's why. Here's a couple of examples. I'll start with a student example who was also a client. This, this gal came to me because she was dealing with pretty severe depression. She had tried a lot of different uh, 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 modalities to, to get rid of the depression. She had not been successful. Uh, she had a lot of other things going on as well, but the depression was the thing that was really bothering her a lot in, in the present. And I did some of my work with her and it was not successful. It, it did not really help her move forward with that either. And so, and it really baffled me because the Senzar work is, is really phenomenally powerful. And, uh, but it didn't really make a dent in this gal situation. So uh, she was having another, yet she was a, you know, let's try again, let's try again. I was having another session and it came up in the conversation. We were just chatting before we got into it. And it came up in the conversation uh, that she was living in this little apartment that barely had any storage. And I can't remember how the conversation got led in this direction, but it did. And she was telling me about how small the place was and that, um, that, that she didn't even have enough space to, to, to store her books uh, and, and other items. And in fact, she was the, the, the books that she did have that she brought with her when she made the move and her journals, uh, she said, were stored underneath her bed. And as soon as she said the word journals, I just had an intuitive flash, just boom, a claircognizant awareness, instant knowing is what claircognizance means. And I said, journals, what do you mean journals? What, 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 when did you create the journals and what are they about? <laughs> and she says, oh, the journals were when I went, you know, that, that shamanistic training program that I went through a couple of years ago. I think I told you about it, she said. Um, during that process, they asked us to journal our feelings and just write down what was going through our mind and all that kind of thing. And I said, okay, so when you were doing that, when you were doing that journaling, were you in having this depression problem at this time, at that time? And she said, yes. Yeah, so even much worse than it is now. And I said, oh my gosh. And I said, and, and what about these other health issues that, that you, you had or that you, you've been working on? Did you have those at that time? And she said, yes, I did. In fact, more severe. And I said, you need to get rid of those journals immediately. You need to pull them out from under the bed and get rid of them. Because what has happened is, is if you were in a depressed state when you were journaling, it is more easy than you, easy, easier than you would ever imagine to actually transfer um, emotional charge uh, and, and, and belief code patterns, thought patterns, and the essence of the thought patterns where they can actually have a, a type of manifest potentiality um, to paper or to a recording or to a video. And uh, I said, you need, you need to remove those journals right away from underneath your bed. I would recommend you destroy them. What, you know, wh what were you journaling about? Were you journaling about, you know, past memories? She says, I was journaling about my life and, you know, getting out on paper some of the angst and, and some of the other things that, that uh, um, I thought might be behind the, the depression. So she was basically journaling, not only about current thoughts and feelings, but she was writing down unpleasant memory moments from her past. Now, when we do clearing work, 
we're trying to let go of the past. We're not trying to hold on to it. So the last thing we want to do is keep a written record of it. So she followed my instructions. She removed, I, I encouraged her. I said, if you feel that you must hold on to those journals, go ahead, but put them in some kind of storage unit outside of the apartment. Don't even have them in the apartment because it's so strong and your light body is going to merge in an apartment that small with those records and the frequencies that have been now anchored in those records. Um, get rid of them. She followed the instructions. She got rid. She destroyed the journals. No exaggeration. The next, first of all, she slept like a baby that night. She was having sleep problems on top of everything else. She slept like a baby and she woke up the next morning without depression and the depression did not ever come back. Da da. <laughs> you know, that's simple. Now, I'm not claiming that something like this, throwing away a journal that you've kept, if you've been battling with severe depression for years, is necessarily going to solve your problem. But I can guarantee you, if you're battling with any kind of negative emotional state or problem that drives up uh, negative emotional energies or problem that belief codes might be causing that you can't just can't seem to escape, that you've got this pattern that keeps on reappearing, and you've got documentation that has has anchored some of the problematic frequencies and thought patterns that led to that problem somewhere in your near vicinity, it's going to inhibit you from totally um, reversing that situation. It's a form of anchoring the memory pattern. And we're trying to let go of the memory patterns. These are all our, our problems are being caused by memory patterns. So let them go. Really let them go. You don't have to save the notes. If the clearing was effective, you're better. And if it wasn't, then you're not. You don't need the notes. It's that simple. So another example. Over the years, I don't do a tremendous amount of client work today. I do do some, but I don't do too much. But years ago, I did a phenomenal amount. I was doing client sessions hours and hours a day, six, seven days a week. I mean, I did thousands of client sessions. And most of those sessions were belief code clearing sessions, and they were fascinating. Now, back in 2008, I wrote a book called Chasing the Shadow of Free Will. And in that book, I have some case studies that are very fascinating. But I I had actually collected thousands of case studies like those that you read in the book. And I, my thought was, I didn't, the, I didn't want a big book. I just wanted a simple little kind of tutorial book on that could be used as a workbook for clearing belief codes. So I didn't want to cram it with too many stories, but I had lots of stories and lots of case studies that, that, that you know, really convinced me about the credibility of this belief code stuff and the clearing methods, the effectiveness of the clearing, the Senzar clearing methods. But anyway, I thought one day I'll write a book where I'll, I'll, I'll just put maybe hundreds of these stories or pluck a hundred of the best ones and put them in there. But I had this big filing. It wasn't a filing cabinet. It was an armoire. And it was this huge thing, this big wooden cabinet. It's probably about six feet wide by about seven feet tall, giant piece of furniture. And I was storing my notes from my belief code clearing cases because I'd always write and take notes as I was figuring out what the belief codes were for the client. And I was stuffing these belief code clearing documents into this filing cabinet. And finally it got full and I started using a secondary file drawer and here's this thing is sitting behind me and uh, one day I decide that I really want to kind of remodel my office and I want to get that big filing cabinet out of there and uh, put something else in there and so I'm going to have to move all those records. Well, I open up, I get the boxes to start moving the records. I open up the door. I hadn't been in there for a while. And when I was in there before, when I did, uh, you know, open the doors to this big armoire, it was only ever to just throw another belief code case on top of the pile. So truly there were like these just giant piles, I mean, four foot, five foot piles of uh, cases of uh, belief code clearing work that I had done. I stuck my hand in to start pulling out the, the, the papers. And as soon as my hand got in there and grabbed a hold of a chunk of the, of the uh, paperwork, my, I felt extreme pain in my hand. And I pulled my hand right back out because of the pain. And it was literally, I hope you can see, I, I can't tell how I'm aligned in the picture. But my hand was literally all cripp crippled up like this. It, it was just loaded with negative thought forms to the point, the point that it temporarily crippled my hand. Like it crippled my hand. I could not move my hand. It looked like I had, uh, um, what do you call it? Rheumatoid arthritis. So I thought, oh my gosh, I instantly had a flash. I instantly knew what had happened. I should have known better in that I had, in doing those client cases, 
energy had transferred through me and what I was writing from the client to me and gotten anchored in those papers. And so not only was a part of the client's issue being held in time, a little teeny speck, it wouldn't have, it's not enough to have prevented the client from, from experiencing you know, the effects of effective clearing, which they did, but it was enough to leave a small thought form on those papers that certainly could very well affect me and my health and probably did affect me along the way. And I didn't even realize that it was any kind of negative causal factor. So I was so sure and so positive that that's what's going on. I literally threw away all those records. I dumped, I destroyed all those records because they were basically loaded with negative thought forms having been transferred, not even as the party directly holding the energy, but as a party interfacing with the energy, documenting that and then filing it. So lesson to the lesson to those of you who are doing client work, um, you really need to think twice about saving those records. If you need to save some kind of records on a separate piece of paper, go in, write the client name, write some kind of just one word or two word description to remind you of the story and um, anything, you know, just in bullet form that's really, really crucial. But any of the in-depth notes that were done when you were doing the client case, whether that's in-person emotional work, belief code work, space clearing work where you're documenting uh, what's going on in the space while you're there in the noxious energy space, even those notes can take on a toxic charge. So lesson learned, um, don't save your notes. Don't make recordings. Uh, if you do make recordings or you do make notes, destroy them promptly. If you have to, just for the sake of remembering enough so you can pick up again, especially if you're a professional, if you're going to pick up again at a later time, again, rewrite when you are no longer in the emotionally charged or noxious situation, rewrite in a clean space, just reminder notes about the session and then just save those very, very brief notes. There you have it. Hope you learned the lesson. Goodbye for now.